So here we are today with Peter Trent, who's the expert on Demerger. Could you tell us a little bit about the book you wrote? This is the book. It's a long one, um, but it's the only book I know uh, was written about the mergers and the demergers. As a matter of fact, a couple of years ago, it was a finalist for the best political book of the year. I had that in well, there. Well, congratulations on that. That's amazing. Within the book, there's at least four or five areas that deal with Robert Lippmann. In Robert Lippmann's flyer, he uh, maintains, in 2001, I was against the government's forced mergers. Well, uh, that's not quite true, because the time uh, he was on the executive committee of the city of Montreal, uh, his enthusiasm uh, for demerger had diminished substantially. Mr. Lippmann now says, I was not against true demerger, but opposed to the Liberal government's Bill 9 at the time. So, Mr. Lippmann's telling us that in 2004, he wasn't against true demerger, but against the particular demerger law. Quotations I have in my book show that back in 2001, he was hoping people would forget demerger. And I quote, If there's a chance to eliminate people's fears, then the resolve to demerge will gradually die away. So that was two and a half years before he even saw the bill that allowed demerger. And as for the actual merger itself, Mr. Libin wants us to believe that it was always against forced mergers, always against the megacity. Well, when he became a member of the executive committee, uh, he did an interview with the Toronto Star, again, about November 2001. The uh, article was entitled, What a Difference a Megacity Job Makes for Outgoing Mayor. In that interview, Libman told the Star that his new megacity job was like a dream come true. And hoped the Supreme Court, because I was fighting the mergers all the way to the Supreme Court at the time, Mr. Libin said he hoped that the Supreme Court would make suggestions on how to make this very important piece of the legislation better. This is Bill 170, right, that everybody hated because it was a forced merger. Mr. Libin went on to say in this interview to the Toronto Star, he said, if we can maintain what we had before in the municipalities, and if we can keep a lid on the taxes, that can be a win-win situation for everyone. So here we have a man who maintained in 2001 he was against the mergers, and yet he was saying there's a possibility of having a win-win situation with his new megacity, but that's once, of course, he became a member of the executive committee. What is interesting is that at the time, and we're talking about 2004, during the whole um, debate about demerger, uh, Robert Libin was saying, look, you don't need to demerge. The boroughs, of which Kulsin Lik was one, have the same powers, whether they're within the city, inside the city of Montreal, or they demerge and become a city in their own right. Since the demerger in the city of Montreal, they've lost control over snow removal, arterial, arterial roads, parking, human resources, labor negotiations, IT, communications, building management, large-scale zoning, purchasing, and the list goes on. So all these, all these responsibilities that Kosen Luke actually has as a city, had Kosen Luke remained as a borough, which he wanted to have happen, you would have lost power over all those services. They would have gone downtown. In fact, today, if Kosen Luke had remained in the megacity the way Mr. Libin wanted, it would control roughly 20% of its spending. Instead of that, by demerging, today, Kosen Luke controls nearly 60% of its spending. So his recommendation for Kosen Luke to remain in the megacity was wrong. It was against what most of the citizens wanted, and I think that's an important piece of information for those of you considering who would be the best mayor of Cote St. Luke. In the case of the mergers and demergers, it's very clear uh, the citizens he represented were against merger, clearly, and for demerger, clearly. Mr. Libman at one point became in favor of merger, that is, in favor of the megacity, and on top of that, he came out against demerger. So he was really off where most Coast and Lugers wanted to go. Just all during this whole period, you never know which foot he was dancing on. And today, uh, I maintain that, uh, to mix metaphors, uh, the leopard hasn't changed his spots. Thank you. We all know the benefits of demerger. We received the right for direct taxation, control over our unions. We saved our emergency medical services. We were able to build an aquatic and community center. And in fact, by having control over our unions, in my first term as mayor, I was able to settle the three collective agreements and ensure labor peace in Cote St. Luke, 
where all the workers are working as a team for all of us. Robert Lindman claims that when he was mayor, we had one of the lowest tax rates. When in fact, when he was mayor in 2001, and we merged with the city of Montreal, our tax rate rose to number three. Today, we are still at number three. Robert Lindman claims that because we demerged, the Cavendish extension did not move forward. Well, everybody knows that since I've been mayor, we've had more advancement on the Cavendish extension issue with the seeding of the Hippodrome land from the province to Montreal with the condition that it be built than ever before in the last 40 years. 